Hi, welcome to Chad Silversmithing. Uh, before we get too far into the video, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button, I'd appreciate it. That helps to get the channel promoted. Uh, I also love it when people leave comments, so uh, feel free to leave suggestions for videos or constructive criticism, or um, I'm always interested in how you do things, so uh, let me know. Um, today, I've been wanting to try this for a while. Um, I've never tried to reshape something that's woven into a kind of a square profile. And um, I also have something else I want to try to run through my square draw play. I want to do a little bit of experimentation today to see how it turns out. And I guess I'll take you along for the ride to see if it works or not. Um, before we do that though, I wanted to thank some groups of people. Uh, first off, my patrons over on Patreon. Uh, they are my core supporters and I think they're wonderful and I want them to know that I really appreciate all that they do. Not only financially, but also just the really cool community that they've created over there. So thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, my YouTube subscribers recently passed 13,200, uh, actually over the weekend while I was doing a show. So thank you for that. And uh, I love the nice comments I get from you guys. Uh, every once in a while somebody posts something that's really kind of moving and I, I really appreciate that. It helps to make when I'm tired and don't feel like doing a video or something, it helps to give me some motivation knowing that I'm helping somebody. So thank you for that and thanks for the nice donations like the buy me a coffee and the super thanks. Those things really help with the rising cost of materials. So thanks for that. All right, well let's get started on this experiment. <laughs> So this is one of my design idea books, and you can find these on my merch store, but uh, recently I've started putting on the backs of them uh, different conversion uh, charts. So this one is fractions of an inch to decimals to millimeters, and I think this one's really useful. I use it quite a bit. Um, there's a couple of other ones as well, and uh, the big feature on them, I think, is this little grid pattern that's in the background, because it helps me to draw symmetrical drawings, which I'm not terribly good at uh, freehand. So um, today I didn't really have to sketch much um, because I'm going to be kind of experimenting with my draw plate here. And um, this is a square draw plate. I'm not sure. I bought this one a long time ago and the holes in it do not really correspond with the gauges that I use. So I'm not sure um, exactly why they're numbered the way they are. But for my purposes I've, I've labeled the important gauges that I use a lot with marker and I'll relabel them when they wear off after a while. Use a little bit of um, lubricating, lubricating wax or lubricating compound when you're using one of these. And um, what, what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to do a, uh, a woven band and then I'm probably going to roll it in the rolling mill a little bit in order to get it sort of squarish shaped. And then I'm going to pull it through some gradually decreasing square holes to see if I can get kind of a square profile and see how the woven pattern ends up looking when I do that. I'm interested to see if it looks attractive or no. And so we'll do that kind of an experiment. The other one I thought to do was um, I've got these uh, big hoop earrings and after I made them I realized they're kind of heavy. And what I did for this one was I took 26 gauge uh, round wire which is relatively thin and I twisted it in the drill and then I folded it in half and I twisted it again and I did that a number of times until I got it up to this thickness and it was five or six times I think in order to do that and then in order to stiffen it up I soldered you know I put quite a bit of solder into it to make it stiff like that but generally they're relatively heavy for earrings and I, I think that may be why these ones haven't sold um, so I'm gonna straighten uh, one of these out and I'm gonna um, sort of pre-flatten it uh, maybe with the hammer and then roll it through the rolling mill. I'm unsure about this one with the, the, the amount of solder that is in here which has you know a different I guess the word might be ductility it's it's uh, I think it's a little bit more brittle than uh, sterling silver so it'll be interesting to see how it stands up to rolling it through the rolling mill as well as pulling it through a draw plate and whether it ends up looking like something usable or not. So, But either way, it'll be kind of a fun experiment and um, maybe something will come of it. Who knows? Uh, hopefully uh, 
if this doesn't work out, maybe it'll inspire some other interesting thing to do with a draw plate or your rolling mill. So, so I'm just going to kind of start by straightening this one out. And I'll just set it to the side for a moment. Um, if you haven't seen my weaving uh, video, that is a, a pretty popular video. I'll put a link to it right up there. But I'm going to go ahead and weave this. And I cut uh, some 18 gauge round uh, silver and some 18 gauge round copper, uh, four of each. And I think I'm just going to alternate them. But uh, to get them into, you could do some different kinds of interesting patterns, like you know, one here, and then two here, and then three here, and then two there. I've never really tried that. I should try that sometime. I usually do it symmetrically, but uh, you may end up getting some kind of cool looks that way. Um, but first, I need some masking tape to tape these ends together. If there's any excess noise today, it's because uh, we have a nearby wildfire. So we have the house sealed up as well as we can and with, with some fans going to keep the air circulating in here nicely. And hopefully they get the fire under control pretty quick. Last I heard it was 650 acres. Kind of west of where I live. We've had a lot of uh, forest fires near here in the past few years. A few years ago, I think it was during the mid-pandemic, uh, we had a great big fire west of here, and it was close enough to where um, partially burnt pine needles were landing in our yard, <laughs> which was kind of freaky. Um, but the smoke, the smoke was intense. It's bad enough today, I can feel my eyes burning a little bit, so. Okay, so I'm just kind of lining those up next to each other like that. We'll try to get them done. Stay there. just to kind of keep them in line. And I'm going to use a shop clamp here. Hmm. I don't know if this clamp is strong enough. I'm going to pause for a second. So I realized that I grabbed the wrong clamp earlier. I grabbed the one that had uh, plastic ends on it, which uh, the wire kind of slides in a little bit. I have this one left from some that I bought a long time ago that has rubber tips on it, and it holds the wire really well, so I meant to grab that one, and I grabbed the wrong one. Um, so what I did was I bent the first two this way, I bent the second two that way, third two this way, and then these ones on the end, I'm going to bend across the other ones like that, and actually pull them down. into the clamp like that. Do the same thing with this copper one. Try to get those sitting one on top of the other. And then I just uh, fold these over the top. This one's going to end up being the next one that goes that way. Usually at this stage then, push them down into the clamp like that. Hopefully not tipping them like I just did. <laughs> oh. Then we'll pull this first one back up. The first few are usually a little awkward because the wires want to slip out. Once you get it started after a bit, then it becomes pretty smooth. And 
the end one is going to come towards me like that. So now we just repeat the process. This one over this. This one on top of that. repeat again. You can also do it, uh, it doesn't have to be in twos, you could do all eight of them this way, not just do it in pairs, and you'll get kind of a whole different look. I've never tried doing it, uh, let's see, what would you have to do? Usually it works best with even numbers. So if you had 12, you could do uh, four groups of three, I suppose. That would make for it. That might be fun to experiment with sometimes. Not sure what it would look like. By the way, thank you those of you who bought my ebook. I really appreciate that. Uh, if you haven't heard, I put together a guide to my 2023 uh, YouTube tutorials. Includes a page for each of the videos, and each page has a, a drawing of my sketch, or a picture of my sketch, I should say, and a picture of the final outcome or outcomes if there was a multiple pro project video. And. Uh, A list of the materials you need to, to actually make it, kind of an evaluation, sort of a subjective evaluation on my part of what difficulty level I think it is, and some notes that I made about each project, like things I ran into that might have given me particularly, uh, you know, might have been particularly problematic, or if I figured out after the fact that there might have been an easier way to do it or something, you know, stuff like that, uh, as well as a direct link to right to the video. So if that is something that might interest you as well, those of you who haven't bought it, there's a link to it right there. I think it's a nice way to um, have a whole bunch of different projects right at your fingertips. So. Since I'm putting out you know, three videos per week, that's at least 150 videos per year. So there's quite a few projects uh, kind of summarized in there. I'm going to finish this off. You don't have to watch me do the same thing over and over again for the entire time, but suffice to say it's it's doing that, and it will continue to do that. And then we're going to try and stretch it out and shape it. So, Okay, be back in a minute. So I finished that up. When it comes out, it's usually a little bit wavy, but I took my uh, 
plastic headed hammer and kind of did a little bit of initial shaping. I feel like um, when I start to run this through the reducing part of the rolling mill, it's going to, because it has a tendency to cup inwards this way, I'm going to, th I think it's going to force these sides further down and it may make it easier to make it into a square, but I'm going to tap it just a little bit more like this to narrow it slightly. Keep in mind, I've not tried this before, so I have to see how it turns out. I may have to anneal it too along the way. It's funny when you do this. Really knocks out a lot of the asymmetry that may have been caused by any slight variation that you did while you were weaving it. All right. So I think let's move over to the rolling mill and let's see if we can make this stretch out and, and get a little bit more square. This is a nice new rolling mill that Epe Tools I think. So I'm going to gradually roll it through reducing these and see how it turns out. It is kind of forcing it together on the bottom a little bit. It's stretching it out nice. I like the way it looks so far. I just cut off a little bit of the stuff that was sticking out at the end because it was starting to do weird stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move to the next slot over here. Let's go one more over. coming out pretty good. So I think uh, at this stage I might, uh, in order to make sure that it doesn't unravel when I start pulling it through the draw plate, I may solder the ends a little bit. So let's do that and then we'll uh, anneal it and let it pickle for a bit. If you haven't been to my channel before, I use primarily hard silver sheet solder. Um, and I use a, a liquid flux. This particular stuff is Mighty Flux. My torch is a Smith, uh, Silversmith model, which is the acetylene hair torch. And I, it's a great torch, I love it. I use a number one tip. So I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use my pick and pick up a little bit of solder after I flux the ends and get it to, uh, to be kind of uh, connected together there. solder to run the entire length. I just want a little bit to hold it together.
should be enough to kind of hold it together. And I probably annealed it at the same time as we did it. So let's let this cool for a bit. Um, and then we'll pickle it. In the meantime, I think let's uh, with this, this twisted wire one, let's try flattening it a little bit manually. And for that, I'm going to, uh, since I want to actually kind of flatten it, not just straighten it out, I'm going to use my chasing hammer. There's some definite thickness differences because of the way that the twisted wire laid unevenly on itself. So it'll be interesting if that kind of stuff smooths out when we start pulling it. And whether we we're actually able to pull this through there or not, it's pretty bumpy. <laughs> I think I'm going to um, anneal this as well, and then I'll come back in a few minutes and we'll see if we can. Uh, uh, start pulling these through the draw plate. So. so you should be able to see I've set up a couple of blocks of wood with some C-clamps to my bench here and I have this set up and I put a little bit of this uh, this Bench Basics blade butter and that works as a really pretty good lubricant. I might put a little bit on this thing too. It looks like this will probably pull through that first one pretty easily and then we'll just keep going down the line until it looks nice and square. Or at least we'll, that's the idea anyway. <laughs> I've never seen this before. These are called draw tongs. They just got teeth in them like that. You can grab stuff. So, um, so let's do that. Give it a try. Okay, I went through that one really easy, so let's do the next one. Okay, pretty easy to do that one. It's going to start catching pretty soon. fourth hole now. Starting to get a little resistance. Start look pretty square. So I'm going to do a few more pulls and see see where this goes. I've reached the point where I need to file the end of this just a little bit uh, so I can get it started. So I'll be right back. That's pretty square. Okay. I think I'm gonna. Should I do one more? <laughs> What's the worst thing that could happen? That's kind of, kind of cool. So 
I'm going to grab that other thing and we'll try that one too. I was pretty sure I could make that one work all right. I'm not, I'm less positive about this one. So this one. Probably start about right there. This is where I need to file this one a little bit down. couple more. So that was 11, so we need to go to 12. Fingers are getting a little loopy. <laughs> So I guess that's as far as we're probably going to go. I might be able to get a little band out of this or something though. So let's make something out of these and see how they turn out. So I'll show you the results after I turned them into little bands. And basically I just, uh, on this one, to prevent it from spreading open when I was bending it, I did solder the ends uh, after I cut them off to the length that I wanted them to be. Uh, and so I soldered the ends and then I pulled the two ends together and soldered in the little um, I am pleased with how that came out. It's not perfectly symmetrical, um, but I've managed to keep it having kind of a square profile, and it makes for kind of a cool, chunky combo silver and copper ring. It looks different from this side than it does from this side because of the way uh, it pulled through the, the draw plate, and so it gives it some interesting character. I like it. I was surprised with how much I like this one. It comes out looking really like, uh, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of, you know, something that is bursting open and the little crackling seams are forming in it, or, or an old broken up rock or something like that, because it's got these recessed areas in it. And it doesn't really look like twisted wire anymore, so I like it. I ran a file around both sides and on the top. Um, and I think uh, if you oxidize that one, that'll really bring that out and make it look kind of unique. So I think there's a lot of uh, potential here for creating some interesting things. So maybe uh, if you think of any ideas, let me know what you think of. I'd like to hear other people's ideas too. So um, this was a fun experiment. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll, take, uh, I'll polish these after I pickle them and take some better pictures and put them at the end. Okay, well that was the experimentation with the square draw plate. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button before you leave. 
And I'd also love it if you take a moment and check out some of my other videos. I have a huge selection of videos now. I have over 350 on my channel. Uh, there's almost certainly something that will interest you. Uh, whether you're a beginner, somewhere in the middle, or an advanced uh, metalsmith, if nothing else, I have lots of ideas for projects. So check them out. Uh, you know, give them a like, and then come back and subscribe to my channel. So, last thing, don't forget to hit the video description. I always put relevant links down there, as well as the materials you need to do the project. Uh, I have uh, a link to my ebook there that I talked about earlier. Uh, if you want to get one of those nice design idea books, those are available there as well. Um, and some other important links, uh, like my Patreon, if you want to see what that community is about. So, check those out. Come back and see me. And happy silversmithing. Take care.